there. Now we've had so many inquiries from all over the world and the students who've trained, people are interested in understanding how to run a business with the black hair. And we choose to call it the business enterprise of black hair. So today we're talking black hair, we're talking black hair business. What is black hair business all about? Now, if you look around you on this table, there's a variety of things that I'm going to be showing you to make you understand what this industry is all about. And I have my laptop here as well. So occasionally I'm going to be reading through what's in the laptop because what I'm trying to give to you today are facts. It's not like when I normally sit here and I show you with the hand movement of a skill and you pick up a skill. This is information that I've researched over the years and this is why we encourage people to apart from getting the skill you have to understand what this industry is all about and that's why today it's all about theory and if you were to come to us for this training we call it the theory of hair braiding or the theory of natural hair business or the theory of hair extensions so it's all about theory and to follow this theory there are books you're going to be seeing there are um, different things that are coming together to make you understand what a business is all about so that's what we want to get across today a business enterprise so thank you so much for buying this dvd uh, we never stop reminding ourselves how privileged we are to be in a position where we can share something with you and enrich your life as well as enrich ours. So today, like I said earlier, we're gonna be working with the laptop. So occasionally you'll be seeing me reading from the laptop to share knowledge with you. Occasionally I'll be typing things as well and then I'll be going through books and reading things to you. So I want you to gain as much knowledge as there is in this industry and that's what this is all about. So I'm gonna start by going into some statistics some facts and some information that you need to be aware of. So here are some facts about the world population. Why have I brought this to you? I want you to know that for you to go into business, you're dealing with people. And if you're dealing with people, how many people are you looking at? So that's why I made it my business to try and break it down to the number of people you're looking at. So the world population, as I said today, 2013 started from 2012 is 7 billion people so we're looking at doing business with 7 billion people 80 percent of these 7 billion people are people of color and when we say people of color we're talking black people we're talking asians we're talking mexicans so they're basically people who come from ethnic backgrounds. So 80% of the world population is from this group of people. The UK where we are based is 62.3 million people. And out of this 62.3 million people, 1.5 million, which is about 2% of the population, are black people. And this is what today is about, is about dealing with the black hair. In the US, where we get a lot of business from people who are interested in what we do. The population is 314 million. And this is as of 2012. 42 million of these 314 million are people, uh, black people, which is about 13.6% of this population are black people. Now, when you're going for the back down, Africa, which is mainly black, is 1.03 billion people. These are black people. Nigeria, a country where I come from, is 170 million people. Ethiopia is 91 million people. Egypt, 83 million people. South Africa, 48 million people. Tanzania, 46 million people, Kenya, 43 million people. Now, why have I taken this time to break all this down to you? We're looking at population. And what we're talking about today in this DVD is the business. 
And when it comes to business, you deal with people. Now, I did some more research into the hair industry. Um, I make a habit of understanding statistics. And I want you to, because now that you bought this DVD, I take it that you're curious about understanding this industry. And this is why I put all these facts together. The total income as of 2011 in hair industry was 72.41 billion, and this is dollars. And it's been increasing with 4.2% yearly. In 2008, the small natural hair care industry topped 1.8 billion. And that's the natural hair care. In 2009, ethnic hair care accounted for 2.7 billion, this is dollars. It was estimated from a research I made that 2013 this year, it would have circulated $4.2 trillion in sales. Everything is changing by the minute. But these are money that people are exchanging from hand to hand. And this could give you an idea of how much money there is in this industry. The hair industry is a multi-trillion dollar industry. African Americans alone spend 1.5 to 2 billion annually on hair alone. And black women in particular spend six times more than every other race. Black women love their hair because it's a part of their culture. Black hair is unique and it requires special grooming. So now that you bought this DVD, how do you and I share in this money that's circulating in this industry? Okay, so today I am sitting here with you to discuss the business enterprise of black hair. What puts me in that position to discuss this with you? What, what entitles me to talk to you about, about this? What gives me the right to sit here and say, I know what I'm talking about? Who am I? Who is Joy Fido? I've, over time, written, if you follow my blog, I've written so much about what I've done, my achievements, and what has put me here today in this position. I am a master natural hair and extensions educator because my idea in this industry is to educate you in areas that you were not aware of or still are not aware of. I am a consultant in natural hair and extensions. I am a designer in natural hair and extensions. And what gives me that right to say these are the things that I am? I'm going to take you through the things that I've achieved to be in this position to talk to you today about this particular industry called the black hair business. So who is Joy Fido? Um, academic education. I have a BSc in business administration. I did MVQ level 2 and level 3 in business administration. I have a level three in teacher training education, and I have Alex in paralegal, which is legal secretary. So these are all my qualification as academic education. Skills education being what I'm talking to you about, hair and hair beauty. I have MVQ level three in hairdressing, And that's the same as cosmetology certification in the US. We call it level three hairdressing here in the UK. Um, diploma in, where's my diploma? Diploma in hair weaving. Um, certificate in hair braiding and extensions. 
certificate in full lace weave certificate in makeup artistry those are all skills business skills education I have a certificate in entrepreneurship certificate in retail MVQ level 3 University of East London a certificate in business empowerment personal and mental development and education this is a certified practitioner in NLP that's why I'm able to talk to you about developing yourself and this is also a certificate in timeline therapy industry and work experience I started playing with hair from the age of five uh, my family my friends everyone around me I encourage them to wear natural hair I wear natural hair my kids wear natural hair and that's why I'm in a position to talk to you about natural hair I started teaching natural hair with the council in the UK council called Newham and it was all about adult education I did it teaching for five years teaching braids weaves and extensions and I might and my teaching was in four different centers and then while I was still doing that part of it I set up my business on the side it was called Braid Creations when we started this is nine years ago and we later changed it to World of Braiding and Extension, um, Extensions which is what you know today so other work experiences before I went into hair uh, I've been a legal secretary you saw my certification in that I worked in banking for a really long time and this was in Nigeria got to the position of deputy manager in the bank um, then when I came over to the UK I worked in telecoms I mean apart from other administrative positions in various places including Department of Health um, different so many places can't remember some of them and then I worked in fashion as well uh, before I left Nigeria I set up my fashion house and after that moved on um, I've been a Herbalife distributor which again if you listen to a video we did on called how do I make money I made a lot of comments about that part of my life and various other business endeavors now business industry membership I'm a member of the hairdressing council here in the UK and these are just some recommendations that I had while working with the council I always had outstanding results whenever I was inspected so all of these things that I've shown you puts me in a position to talk to you about this industry and with series and series of research and experiments and finding out as much as I can in this industry I am in a position to talk to you about it so before we go into understanding what black hair business is all about or black hair business enterprise is all about I want us to understand what what is a business and what is a business enterprise according to Merriam Webster dictionary which is one of the best known dictionary at the moment a business is an activity engaged in as a means of livelihood so you're doing something with the hope that it will give you something back that will help you in your daily living that's what a business is it's a transaction especially of an economic nature so you're doing something with the hope to gain economically from it that's what a business is then I also checked what is an enterprise is a unit of economic organization or activity especially a business organization so you see how business and enterprise have come together you're trying to do something that will give you a means of living so when we look at it from there we're going to take it now with us to the business enterprise of black hair so what is black hair because I know when I 
wrote that question as well. First thing that came to my mind is, what if somebody's thinking a hair that has black color? We're not after a hair that has black color, because any race can have a hair that has black color. We are talking about hair from people of black race. So that's what we mean by black hair. Now, I personally prefer to call it the Afro hair. But then it's up to anyone how they want to define it. To me, hair from people of black race is Afro hair. But if you choose to define it differently, it's not a problem. We're talking about hair from people of black race. So what is black hair business enterprise? We're going to use our understanding of what is a business enterprise to now look into what black hair is or what hair from people of black race is. We're trying to see how this part of us, which is our hair, can support our economic dependence or how can this hair help us to achieve a living. So why should the black hair be a business enterprise? That's the next question you probably want to ask. For anything that has issues, that needs attention, that needs support, that needs solutions, you can turn whatever that thing is into a business. Because to me, what is a business? You're trying to solve a problem. You're trying to give solution to something that people are having issues with. Now, when you look into the black hair community, what are the problems of black hair? Because we get inquiries every day. Every day people are asking, how do I grow my hair? My hair is breaking. My hair is dry. My hair is not growing. These are issues. These are problems. And it is somebody's role to support people like this, to help them deal with these issues. And that's why you had the statistics I gave you. People are making billions of dollars from this industry. What do you think they're doing? They're supposedly trying to solve the problem of the black hair. And I'm going to go into breaking down to you some of the issues in the black hair industry, which you and I can help to solve. And if we are able to solve it, we are already in business because we're solving a problem. And when you solve a problem, what people do is they give you something in return for what you give to them. It's just like me sitting here and educating you. And for you to have this DVD, you paid some money because you are looking for solutions. And I'm here to pass it on, to share it with you. So you put some money down and I give you a DVD. Same thing with the person with a dry hair problem or with a breakage hair problem. They want you to give them a solution. And when you give it to them, they give you something in return, and that's the money. So what are some of the problems that black hair community face? We have dry hair issues. Our hair is generally very dry. We have tangled, coily hair. Now, as we progress in this DVD, I'll take you through the black hair, how it grows, how it tangles up, what are the products that help who we'll deal with that. But for now, I just want you to have an idea what this industry entails. We have very dry hair for reasons I will explain. This hair tangles because this hair is naturally very coily, so they wrap around each other. And that's why people have problems detangling the hair. Because of the tangledness of the hair, the hair breaks very easily. People are in a hurry. People are not patient, so they rip the hair apart and it breaks. It lacks moisture, so moisture does not sit in the hair, so we need to constantly moisturize the hair. How do we retain the length? And that's why we need, we're very curious. If your hair is breaking or is dry and it's breaking, the length is not being retained. And if it's not being retained, you think your hair is not growing. Hence, we worry about our hair is not growing. What can we do to grow it? Visible hair growth is a problem, so we want to see it. What are the various protective hairstyles we can think of? What are the products that are really good for black hair? How do we find them? Where are they and at what price? 
what kind of food should we eat that will help our hair grow? So these are major issues in our industry. And then we have education issue. Education to me is one of the biggest problems in the black hair community. And this is what water braiding is all about. Hence, we have put together this package of educating you so you know what hair you're dealing with. And why do I say that? This is a book on hair. It's called the Hair Bible. And it's a complete guide to hair, to health and care of hair. And I'll read something to you. It says, with a twisted configuration and a thin diameter, that is the black hair, there are intermittent variations in diameter as the twisting occurs, and that's the way our hair coils. And due to their curliness, the hair wraps around each other, resulting in serious tangles. That's the black hair. Trying to detangle this type of hair can break it at its weakest points. And the pulling may lead to stressing the hair follicles and traction hair loss. So the more you try to drag this hair, the quicker it breaks. Because of the problems inherent in this type of hair, grooming presents a dilemma. And then this is this month's solution to the black hair. It says, although I rarely recommend strong chemical procedures, I feel that rather than repeatedly subjecting this hair to twisting and pulling traumas, and his idea of twisting and pulling is all about braiding and adding extensions. His understanding of that is, it is better to use chemical hair straighteners. He says, Although he doesn't encourage chemicals, however, in the long term, the benefits far outweigh the risk. So to him, the benefit of putting chemicals in the black hair is better than you looking at ways of dealing with your hair issues. Now for people like this, I really don't have much to say because black hair has nobody teaching them how to take care of their hair. And this is one of the biggest issues I dealt with when I went to study hairdressing, or cosmetology as you might call it. We had someone email us saying to us, from watching our videos on YouTube, she has learned so much than 1,500 hours that she put in to study cosmetology. Now, this is the book I used when I did my level three. And I took my time to go through this book to understand what the units were. And there was nowhere in this process of the things I was going to learn in hairdressing that was going to deal with how to care for the natural Afro hair. This is what I say to everyone. I'll come back to that. But this is another book aimed at Afro-Caribbean hairdressing. This lady tried her very best. But when you go into the content of looking at this hair, this book, things like client care, that's the first module, hair characteristics, Shampooing and conditioning, setting, blow drying, styling and finishing, chemical relaxing, perming, thermal styling, cutting, coloring, and then a little part they're talking about hair extensions and just a tiny little part talking about natural hair then health and safety so this whole book focusing on black hair only spent a few pages on 
natural hair, natural black hair. So what I say to people is you go to cosmetology school to study hair and no one is teaching you about the black hair. But you're going to come out of there and you're going to open a shop and you're going to attend to black hair. And we looked at statistics and it says 80% of the world population are people of color. So is it your understanding of other hair types that's going to help you treat the black hair in its natural form? I don't think so. But it's important that you know that this is what this industry is presenting to you. So education in the natural black hair is very important. And right now it is missing. So we're still continuing with the industry of hairdressing and for you to understand the differences between hairdressing and natural hairstyling and black hairstyling. So I'm going to read to you basic things that was in the training I had to go through while studying for my MVQ level 3 hairdressing. And I'm going to compare that with what World of Braiding teaches people who come here to learn. So we had ensure your own actions reduce the risks to health and safety, promote additional products or services to clients, provide hairdressing consultation services, support customer service improvements, contribute to the financial effectiveness of the business, provide hair extension service, that's a little one, develop and enhance your creative hairdressing skills, Style and dress hair to achieve a variety of creative looks. Style and dress long hair. Create a variety of looks using a combination of cutting techniques. Provide color correct correction services. Perm hair using a variety of techniques. Color hair using a variety of techniques. Provide corrective relaxing services. Contribute to the planning and implementation of promotional activities. Style hair using thermal styling and create complex styles using African Caribbean techniques. That wasn't explained. And create locking techniques and provide Indian head, head massage. That's my level three. Now I'll show you what, I'll tell you what water braiding offers here. We talk about braiding techniques. We talk about weaving and extensions techniques. And we guide you through understanding what natural hair is all about, how it grows and how you can care for it. So we're looking at the natural hair braiding techniques. And the first is the individual braiding, which is the single plaits. The single plaits, you add extensions to it. The pixie braids, the pixie pin curls, the bantu knots, micro braids with the 100% human hair, two strand twist natural hair. Senegalese twist using silky hair, Senegalese flat twist, Afro kinky twist, palm roll which is locks, one strand comb twist, three braiding plaits, silky locks, cornrows, undetectable cornrows, Ghana cornrow, yarn braiding, corkscrew, Nubian twist, flat twist, French braid, fishtail, and the list goes on. Now it's braiding. What about the extensions and weaves? Full cornrow closure weave, part natural hair cornrow weave, extensions natural parting weave, cornrow design front weave, ponytail weave, gel design weave, latch hook weave, cornrow skip track weave, which is what we call the track extension, bonding weave, infusion using the micro connectors, infusion using the glue gun or glue pot, tree braid weave, infusion using the heat gun, weave cap or stocking weave, net weave, track weave, clippings. So look at what I've just read out to you and what a whole book like that is offering. And you spent two years to go and start the hairdressing, 1500 CPD hours, you call it whatever you want to call it. And you come here and our major, major um, course is what we call the International Hair Braiding so and our most detailed training is the international hair braiding and that is 21 weeks of training. How many months is that? We're talking two years of training 
14, 1500 hours of training and all you're focusing on is cutting and coloring and perming and that's a cause. Now why that gives me reason to talk is I am here to share knowledge and skill with you and then I get people query how much I charge a DVD. 35 pounds? That's not the price of a, of a shoe. Now that is 35 pound shoe. That's just a shoe. And that's 35 pounds. That's another shoe. I think 40 pounds. That's a shoe. Another shoe. 40 pounds. That's a shoe. Now the reason I've shown you the shoes is for you to understand that this shoe can break tomorrow. I could just go out with it and pop goes the heel and it's over. But when you buy a DVD from World of Reading, what you're getting out of that DVD is years and years of education that I have taken on. I just finished showing you series of certificates that I've acquired over the years. Now those certificates were not free. Those certificates, some of them cost me $2,000, somewhere $1,000. And this is not adding the cost of me hopping on the, tra uh, on the plane to the US, to Africa, to various parts of the world to go and seek knowledge. But what I find, which is what next thing I'm going to go into, is the problem with the black hair business enterprise. What is wrong with black people and understanding what a business enterprise is why do we believe that you want to gain a skill for nothing why because the next thing I want to ask you is what are your priorities in life if your priority is to just look good then shoes is what you want but shoes is not going to give you any skill shoes and I tell you people spend hundreds and thousands of pounds or dollars buying hair extensions. People spend hundreds and thousands of dollars buying handbags because all they want to do is look good. Now for the sake of generations and born in the black community, what are we leaving behind for our children? What kind of jobs do we want our children to finish their education and come and do? Because I hear people tell me here every day, I don't have money. This is a magazine I came across. And the first question she's asking is, why do black, people, black women in particular take on menial jobs? I'll take you to some of the problems I've found in the black hair business enterprise. There's lack of trust in our fellow black people. I have invested this number of years, the money that I cannot even begin to connect with. I can't count how much money I have invested in growing and understanding this industry in order for me to share it with people that will help us move our race forward. But people still contact me here and they expect to have my years of training and education and research and daily expenses. I'm using electricity to talk to you right now. I'm using a camera. There's someone behind the camera that needs to be taken care of financially. You're looking at a laptop, you're looking at books all over the place, and you're buying a DVD for 35 pounds, and you're complaining. It is full of knowledge and skill and information that will help you grow something. That is the mission of World of Braiding, to empower you financially so you can do something with yourself. I can't begin to explain how I feel when I have people call me and they're complaining about a video of 35 pounds or a training of 500 pounds 
you come here you sit with me for four days five days and i empower you with skill that will help you grow and you don't trust me enough to share 500 pounds with for me to have put all this together for me to pay rent to organize this place so you can have somewhere to come and learn there's lack of believing who we are we think our business should be taken over by other races it just hurts me when I get to see people do that and then we have the chick to complain that people who are selling hair extensions are not people of black race people who are selling food for the black people are not people of black race when are you going to wake up and see what is happening around you reality is the brain in our head does not care what color you are made of so if you have sold your industry your community your children unborn to other races and you sit back fold your arms and you say no one is letting me do business you're not being fair to yourself you're not being fair to your people there's lack of belief on in what we are capable of doing one question i like to ask people let's say you are you are unemployed which is typically the case you haven't got the money do you have the time because if you have time to spare you could support anyone you could go out there and help people and sometimes they pay you for your service a lady once said to me when you help others you are actually helping yourself have you tried helping others to see if what you're going to gain from helping others could be that same thing that you are looking for. There's lack of appreciation and respect in what our community and race has to offer. And I brought here a book that helps me to explain this. This is a book called Africa Betrayed. When I read this book, all I could think of was cry. Africa as a continent has so much to offer the black race. So much. The question is, do we know how to use the things we have? The answer is, no, we don't. So what do we need? We need to know how to use the things we have to help ourselves. But that's where we are lacking. We are laid back. We are, I won't say we're lazy, but we're not interested in finding out. Because there's something they call the computer. And right now the internet is upon the world. People did not know they could take care of their own natural black hair until they started searching in YouTube and everyone who's been able to deal with their hair are sharing knowledge on how to take care of their hair. Why are you still behind? This is another book that's talked about Africa again, Africa Rising. Lots of information of all the potentials in Africa. But what are Africans looking for? Just like me here, we hop into the plane and we chase things that don't exist. Because yes, the Western world offers so much in our thinking, so we chase it. And we end up in countries where the basic things we do not have. We would have been better off at home in Africa looking for ways to solve our problems. Same thing with the black hair. We should be looking at ways of solving the black hair problems. But we are so untrusting of each other that even the person who's willing to share knowledge and skill with you, you are not willing to share. Just a bit of exchange, 35 pounds, 500 pounds, 1,800 pounds, and you will have skills that will set you apart from the rest of the people but you would rather complain. You would rather go to hairdressing school, cosmetology colleges. I had someone email me 
And she said to me, she spent $11,000 going to cosmetology college. Yes? But pay £35 for a DVD that's going to empower you, that's going to be more information than your 1,500 hours you spend in your cosmetology, $11,000 training, you question it. So we have to decide what is important to us. Uh, we have to reorganize our priorities. And we have to decide what will it be. Is it our immediate looks and beauty? Because we have been known, the black race have been known as a race that's just there to just buy. All we enjoy doing is buy. We buy other people's inventions, we buy other people's ideas. We don't want to create our own ideas. So things like jewelry, you spend thousands of pounds on that. We've talked about shoes, we've talked about hair extensions, we've talked about bags. We have to decide if that's what we want to do with our race and with our unborn children and with our future. Or we have to decide if we want to invest in our race, in our unborn generations to come. And I'll take you through some history of what the black hair industry has been like. I found this very interesting. It's, it's called Afro-Caribbean hairdressing. And this particular one came from Habia. Before I go into that history, I've talked about Madame C.J. Walker and what she went through as a person and she ended up creating a multi-million dollar industry. In the 18th and early 19th century, this lady made me understand what the black hair industry was all about and she called it Let's Talk Hair, Pamela Forel. For the first time I started noticing that the chemical relaxers wasn't what the black hair needed. Just like that other book talked to us about, said the solution is to relax it. This lady says that's not the solution. So it's for you to start educating your mind. Because we're going to start seeing different things that's actually good for black hair. This was another book that really took me into the black hair industry. To me, this book should actually have been called The Business of Black Hair Enterprise because this book took me into the history. It's called Untangling the Roots of Black Hair in America and the main title here is Hair Story. Similar to what that book talked about was the history I saw in the Habia book. It carries on from way back, but it starts here with the 1800s. Three black sisters, Cecilia, Machita, and Caroline, owned and operated one of the largest wig factories in America. 1900s, Madame C.J. Walker and Annie Tombo were both instrumental in the development of black hair and beauty products. They actually started the cosmetology industry as we know it today. They went on to develop vast companies selling hair and beauty products in the early 1900s. Madame C.J. Walker was the first female American to become a millionaire and enter the Guinness Book of Records. And that was on hair alone, nothing else, just hair, black hair. 1920. Finger waves came into being. I'm going to just skip some of the parts that's not necessary. The one that really excited me again was 1971 when we had the Johnson Afrochim products. And then Johnson became the first black owned company to trade on the American Stock Exchange on hair. And that story I got it from here as well. And they were the first one to introduce, they actually sponsored a program on TV. 
which was called the Soul Train. It's the Johnson & Johnson, it was called. It was a husband and wife business. And they, they, they actually owned about 82%, if I'm not being very sure now, I won't quote it, but a huge share of the market industry, the market share was owned by this family, Johnson & Johnson. And a lot of history came up after that. When you read this book, you open your eyes to what the black hair industry has to offer. So why do we need to invest in skills? We're investing in skills for the future of our children and for the good of our race and our community. And I have a habit of trying to find out what, what, what are we all looking for as a race or as a people. We all need dignity, we all need pride, we're looking for prestige. How are we going to achieve that? In that video I did on how do I make money, money makes the world go round. That's what I say to everyone. But what I find very funny with our race is we want to take something from where we did not put anything. So it's called, it's in the Bible, you want to rip from where you did not sow. If you want to rip something, you should be happy to invest something. And what I've, I've done a bit of research, I did, I wrote a blog on some of the things that we're getting out of the educational system we have today and the amount of money people are having to spend, families are having to spend to educate their children. And I found, I did a bit of research, Yale University, you're spending at least $54,000 per annum for your child to go to school in Yale University. Harvard University, $52,000 per annum. Cornell, $41,000. Princeton, $54,000. We're not talking anything extra. I don't know about the accommodation. I don't know about traveling. I don't know about where they're coming from. So all of those costs you have to add in there. In the UK, it's about an average of £9,000 per annum for a child to go to university. And some specialist courses, you're looking at £25,000. An example is the oil and gas industry. And a student of mine told me something about a school for makeup here in the UK called Grease Paint. £17,000 for a 14 weeks training. That's Grease Paint, I can deal with. It's a skill. They train in so many things, so thank God for that. But the universities, I still question it. I saw a research recently done, it's in The Guardian. Probably I remember the data at some point, if you ask me. And the issue was, is the educational system failing our children? We need to look at that again. Because when our children come out of these universities with this £9,000 per annum fee, $54,000 per annum fee, and then we've been told that the student debt as at 2012 had gone over one trillion dollars. What is happening in the economy? But then someone wants to equip you with a skill and they're asking for 1,800 pounds and you are complaining because this is the skill you're gonna set up a business with. So what I say to people is, the greatest injustice and disservice we can do to our society is what we're doing now. We do not appreciate what is in our community. We wait for other races to tell us what to do. You go to hairdressing school, they're not going to teach you about your black hair, but you go there anyway. Who are you going to service when you finish? Who are your customers? You need to find out. Whose hair would you be doing after spending $11,000 in a cosmetology college? Is it to cut the hair? How many black people want their hair cut? Why are we buying, putting so much money into hair extensions if all we want to do is cut the hair? Celebrating our students' success is something we put together just to talk about the number of students we have trained over the years 
and we have it for free download on our blog site which we will give you at the end of this DVD and making money with hair braiding is an ebook we put together for you to know how to start turning what you, you've gained as a skill into a business but again this is what this video is all about and we're going to go into more details.